Hi guys, today I thought we would have a quick look at how to make this kind of, I guess it's called cinemagraph plus time lapse kind of thing. I'm not very sure what it's called, but basically it's just a combination of still pictures with moving parts. And also you can kind of loop it uh, seamlessly, quite seamlessly. So if you put it, upload it to Instagram or something, you just keep looping uh, without kind of, you can't really see the uh, the seams. So basically if I cop make another copy of these layers and put it next to each other, so basically place to the end and then loop to the beginning again, you'll see that uh, on the, uh, the joints, it will be not too jarring. So just keep looping and looping. So uh, yeah, let's have a quick look. So let's have a quick look at the ingredients we'll be using. The first thing is just a normal still picture with one of our friends standing in front of the department store. Uh, we took this with the camera on the tripod. Then without moving the camera, we continue to take a series of um, time lapse from exactly the same angle of the fountain show. So we have these two ingredients, the person, just a normal still shot, and also the time lapse of the fountain show. Then the third thing we have is just this footage of some firework because on the way back to the car park, someone just let off some fireworks. So I just recorded it and well, might as well use it, I guess. Um, and then we're gonna be combining these layers into, well, if we have a look of them one by one, the bottom layer will be the time lapse as the background. The second layer will have our friend standing right here. And then the third layer, we'll put in some lighting effects. So it looks a bit more realistic, like the light or the, yeah, basically the light and the color from the waterfall is hitting the person. So as you can see, without the, the lighting effect, it's just, um, it looks a bit less realistic because the person is just staying there completely static without any light lighting changes or color changes. Whereas in if he's really standing in the time lapse, you know, the colors from the light show and stuff would be hitting him. So that's the third layer we'll be putting in, just some effects. And the final layer is, well, if you want, you can just put in uh, some firework, I guess, which um, you don't really have to. <laughs> but um, yeah, so let's have a quick look at how to do this. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to loop the time lapse clip so that way it plays from the beginning to the end and start at the beginning again. It'll be uh, qu quite seamless. So the first thing I'm going to do is going to go to the beginning of the clip and then I'm going to move the playhead 15 frames to the right. So I just hold shift on my keyboard and then press the right arrow, one, two, three. That'll move it uh, 15 frames. And I'm just going to trim the beginning of the clip uh, just like so. And now I'm going to make another copy of this clip. Just hold alternate on your keyboard or option if you're using Mac and then left click your mouse and you can just drag out another copy. And then what I'm going to do is place the second copy at the end of the first copy. So right now what's happening is basically this clip is basically playing to the end and then it's starting at the beginning again because this clip, the beginning of this clip is basically the same as the beginning of this clip. So basically it's looping right now. So we're just gonna see if when it the first clip ends and it starts again, if there's like a jump or is it, if it's that too jarring. Uh, with time lapse, it's usually quite hard, harder to spot, but you can still see like there's a little bit of a jump there when this person comes in and it just suddenly disappear. So now we're going to make this transition like a bit more seamless. What we're going to do is instead of having this hard jump where it just, you know, comes to the end of the first clip and then jump straight back to the second clip, I'm just going to drag out the first 15 frames that I've trimmed off initially. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to fade the second clip in. So I'm just going to go to the beginning of the second clip and in the opacity in the effects control panel for the opacity, I'm just going to put it at zero. So it's going to create a keyframe. And then at the end of the first clip, I'm going to put the opacity back to a hundred. So basically what's happening now is uh, this second clip, instead of before it was just coming in, 100% straight away. Now it's going to slowly fade from 100 just before the end until the beginning again. Now let's have a quick look. So now the uh, the jump is kind of a bit less jarring so you can see it fades slowly but if you're not really looking for it I don't think you can kind of notice it. So now what we can do now is just trim this all the way to here. So basically what, what's happening right now is this first clip is basically playing, playing, playing to the, the end, right? And then once it's getting near the end, the second clip is fading back in and then, you know, fading from zero to 100 opacity. And basically this frame right here is basically the same as the first frame of the first clip. So basically what's happening is basically fla fading into the loop right now. So if I just trim this second clip like so, and put this this kind of chunk here into a loop. It's fading, 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 and then when it gets to here, it's basically the same as the, the first frame here. So you know, just keep looping. If we just loop these two layers, and 
let me place it right here you can see that the loop will just be kind of seamless and then we can just you know place as many layers as we want or basically in uh, Instagram or something it will just automatically loop from the beginning to the end and then come back to the beginning play come back to the beginning play having looped the time lapse background now we're just going to place our person into the scene so I'm just going to grab the layer of the person and put it on top now right now it's just obscuring everything underneath so we'll have to cut out this person which we can just do in Premiere Pro because we don't have to do it too intricately the person is quite small so you know you don't have to draw like a super exact mask but you can just uh, in Premiere Pro go to the opacity here in the effects control and then you can see you can draw a circular mask a square mask or you can just use a pen tool to draw a mask around the person so I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and just going to start cutting this person out now one annoying thing or inconveniences about drawing a mask in uh, <laughs> Premiere Pro is basically as you can see you can't place the next anchor point too close to the, the first one so let's say right here where the, the trouser is kind of curved in I have to maybe draw out here then move the point in you know draw out here then move the point to the right uh, area so that's a bit of an inconvenience but it's not too bad so I'm just gonna draw a quick mask around the person and then when I finish uh, then we're gonna carry on come back and have a look at the rest of the process Okay, so now I've finished uh, making a mask around our person. So let's have a quick play. Uh, it's coming together quite nicely. So if I kind of shut off the, the bottom layer with, with, of the time lapse, you can just see it. It's basically just a person is cut out basically. And you have a few options with the mask. So if the mask feather is basically how sharp the edge of your mask is. So if I turn back on the background and I increase the, uh, the mask feather, um, too much you can see that the edges let me unselect this mask the edges starts to become kind of a bit blurry and fussy and it doesn't look very good so usually I have it around one or two so we have a sharper edge a cleaner edge but not so sharp that it's like zero it's like really super sharp so maybe it's one or two I find it, it's looking okay so the next thing we're going to do is now have a quick look at how to create the lighting effect so we're going to simulate kind of the lighting from the fountain hitting the person and changing the color of our subject and also the uh, you know to make it look a bit more realistic like he's standing there in the time lapse before doing that though it might be a good idea to clean up our layers a bit so I'm just going to highlight these two layers of the uh, the background which is the time lapse background that's supposed to be looping uh, around and around and I'm just going to right click and then press nest so basically it's going to create a new sequence and put these two together in the same sequence and we can just name a sequence maybe time lapse background or whatever you want press ok and now you see they're grouped together in a new sequence and it's nice and tidy and I'm just going to move the person layer down one to be next to each other now for the lighting effects on the person I'm going to make another copy of the time lapse background so hold alternate on your keyboard or option if you're using Mac and just left click drag another copy pl place it on top so right now it's obscuring the bottom two layers so we can just only see the time lapse right and then the effects I'm going to use is if we go to effects panel just use your mouse wheel to scroll around or if you can't see it just go to windows and then effects and they will show you this panel search for the eyedropper fill effect so right here eyedropper fill and we're just going to place this effect on the time lapse background layer that we've just created so right now you can see that the color of the entire layer has has changed to like a, another color basically what this effect allows you to do is you can select a point a sample point anywhere on the layer and the color of the entire layer will change according to the uh, the color around that area so if I just let's turn this blend with original to 100 so we can see uh, below uh, if I place the sample point let's say at this fountain right here this blue fountain and I turn the blend with original back to 100 you can see that the, the color of the entire layer has changed to blue so right now if we play the clip with the sample point right here basically the color of the entire layer will just change following the color of the fountain like around there where we place the sample point another option we have is the sample radius so the sample radius is basically if we have it at let's say um, 0 or 1 uh, it would sample the color the exact point at the, the middle of the sample point but if we have the sample radius larger let's say 10 or 20 it will kind of take like an average around that area so if it's like dark blue light blue it just combine them and just you know spit out a kind of average in between color I think for this uh, purpose uh, 10 is fine it should be fine 
So right now we just have a, a layer where the color is just changing following the fountain. But of course we don't want the color effects to affect the entire layer. We just want it to happen like around where our person is to you know affect the color of the person. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to the layer of the person underneath. So let, let's just see, have a look. The layer of the person and we're gonna just click on the mask. So what we're gonna do is copy this mask. Just right click and go to copy and then go back to the time lapse layer at the top and then in the opacity right click and press paste so now we've pasted the mask on top of this layer so we can only see it around just around where the person was now the mask doesn't line up perfectly so I'm just gonna move the, ma the, the layer slightly to the right uh, to match line up with the person exactly there you go now we have the lighting effects on the person which is basically uh, what we want the next thing we're going to do is basically for this time lapse background layer, we're going to go to the opacity again. And for the blend mode, instead of normal, we're going to use color. So right now, the color of that layer is going to affect the person. So before it was normal, it was just basically sitting on top of our person. If you change it to color, now it's basically it's going to affect the color of the, the layer underneath. So basically, our person is changing color following the color of the, the fountain around here. Now obviously right now the effects is a bit too strong so we might want to go to the mask and for the mask opacity we're just going to turn it down maybe to around uh, 27 or something like that and yeah, let's have a quick look yeah I think that's about the right level obviously you can that's no right or wrong you can ch tune it to whatever you want but now it's like kind of like a slight lighting effect or color effects to make it the person more more blended into the the background and the one other thing we might do is basically let's say the light is coming from the fountain we might want it to just hit kind of the front edge of the person so right now basically it's just hitting the entirety of the person including like the backpack and the back back edge of the leg which kind of in reality if he's standing you know like here the lights coming from here it probably wouldn't be hitting like his back so instead of uh, the original mask where it's covering the whole area i might want to go in and kind of just move the mask around a bit so it only Maybe, you know, instead of affecting the entire person, just have it affect the front edge right here. So you can just go in and kind of like, you know, move the mask around just like so and have the, uh, the effects just be on the front edge of the person. So I'm just going to move the mask around for a bit. And then when I finish, we're going to come back and have a look at the rest of the process. Okay, now I've altered the shape of the mask so that basically the, the lighting effects only affecting the front edge of the uh our model and the back edge like the backpack around here and his far back is not being hit by the light anymore now one thing though if we zoom in the edge right now is a bit too sharp for my liking so like you can see kind of like the edge where the lighting effect is happening and where it's not so if we just look at the uh, the time-lapse background layer we can see it basically this is what we're having right now so we might want to kind of feather the edges out a bit so in the mask option we can go to the mask feather instead of one this time we can have it maybe around 27 so right now we have a look the edge is much softer and it should look a bit more realistic so we turn the bottom layers back on now you can see it you don't see that edge anymore the lights kind of like fading a bit so it's hitting his his front here and just kind of fading into the the model so if we look it looks a bit well quite a bit nicer really okay well you can just stop here if you want you basically have your cinemagraph time lapse kind of thing but uh well we might as well just add in the fireworks right so okay i'm gonna go to the uh the firework layer and again just like the time lapse layer i'm just gonna make a loop out of it because this time around i think it'll be even like more jarring it'll be easier to spot the uh you know when it ends and starts again so you can see that's a, a jarring jump right so again i'm just going to use the exact same method i'm just going to go to the beginning go 15 frames and then trim the beginning part out just like so and again just make another copy and place the copy right at the end so basically right now it's playing to the end and then you know starting to loop again and again, I'm going to drag out the uh, the first 15 frames that I've trimmed. So 15 here, and then just going to drag it out like so. And then again, I'm just going to fade the second the second layer in slowly. So I'm just going to go to the beginning and put the opacity at zero. And then when it's finished its loop, put the opacity at 100. So now I think the the transition or the looping should be more 
kind of seamless and as you can see right now it's fading into the second clip and then start playing you know on the second loop so again we can just trim this back all the way to the beginning because basically where it loops it's fading 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 into the loop and then it starts again at the beginning right so again I'm just gonna tidy up uh, this up quickly I'm just gonna highlight these two layer right click and press nest just to you know group them together in a new sequence maybe call it firework or something like that there you go and we have our new layer so we just uh, place this next to each other we can see it just kind of loops much better so now we're going to place the firework layer on top of the layers that we've already created so i'm just going to drag it on top of the rest of the layers and obviously right now it's obscuring the rest of the layers underneath so we're going to change this blending mode from normal to lighten and now as you can see we can pretty much only see the fireworks and a few buildings in the background which is pretty much what what we want basically with the light and blend mode if we have a look at our layer only the part that's uh, brighter than the layers underneath will affect it so obviously our fireworks layer is quite dark pretty much only the bright the only bright parts are the fireworks and like kind of these buildings which is pretty much what we want already so you, can, you can't really see anything else distracting on the, the rest of the layer. But in case if you're like, let's say your footage, is, there's like some bright buildings or some bright lights around here that you don't want. Obviously you can, again, draw a mask around just the area that you want to, you know, to, to keep basically. So let's say right now we can just go to the opacity and again use the uh, pen tool to just draw a mask around the area that we want. So this is, I'm just gonna try and do it as quickly as possible. So you don't have to waste time watching me draw a mask. Uh, <laughs> I'm just going as quickly as I can, maybe around here, around here. And I'm gonna zoom out a bit to see, you know, where I'm drawing, around here, around here, oops, sorry. And around here. So as you can see, the fireworks display uh, disappeared because right now we're only keeping the, the things we want inside the mask. Obviously, we want the things outside the mask. So we're going to go to the mask and then click on the inverted button. And now everything outside the mask, you, you'll be able to see. So right now, we'll only be able to see the fireworks. And you wouldn't have anything distracting around like at the bottom area right here. Okay guys, I hope that was useful. Maybe if you don't want to do this exact thing, you might, you know, find some ideas you can use and adapt and apply to other situations. Maybe use the eyedropper fill effect for some other work you're doing. And the clip has kind of uh, been longer than I expected again. <laughs> I thought this would take only maybe 10 minutes. I'm not sure how long this has been. Maybe I think at least like 15 minutes or something. So I'm just gonna don't ramble any further and don't waste your time any further and uh, well maybe if I get another chance I'll uh, do some more clips and uh, I'll see you then I guess bye